Praise the Lord. Book of Philippians, if you will, chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, chapter 3, verse number 13 and 14. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Father, I just thank you for your love and your mercy, and I pray that you'll touch our hearts. I pray that your spirit will bring to surface and reveal things hearts that we need to deal with, get taken care of. Lord, there's things that we've been struggling with and fighting in our lives for many days, many months, weeks, years. Give people victory today, we pray. I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Look at that again, Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, I have to get over this. Lord, I have to get over this. You know, bad things just happen to us. We're children of God. Reigns on the just as well as the unjust. The Christian life is a life of blessings, but bad things do happen. Huh? It's just our lot, the common lot of men and women. Bad things do happen. And sometimes we just happen to be the recipient of those bad things. We fall, we get angry. But I think that we should be growing in the Lord. We should be growing in Him, but it seems like we don't. Things stunt our growth. We find ourselves in a rut. We find ourselves, you ever been stuck in your vehicle and all you do is just spin your tires? And that's the way it is in a lot of lives. They're just spinning their spiritual wheels. They're not advancing in God, not growing in the Lord, not maturing in God. There's usually something that has hindered us from growing in the Lord. Usually someone <laughs> that has hindered us from growing in the Lord. How long have you been fighting this thing in your life? How long have you been struggling with this thing in your life? You look at others, you see them praising the Lord. You look at others and you see them just entering into the presence of the Lord and you think, man, I, I wish I could be like that. I wish I could get into the presence of the Lord like that and worship God like that. But we continually struggle with things. Has it been months, weeks, years? Church, we have to let go of some hurts. And move on. And I'll tell you why. I know it's easier said than done. It's easier said than done, isn't it? Because nobody wants to be. How many, of you, how many of you like being done wrong? Even Jesus didn't like being done wrong. He didn't like being done wrong. Paul didn't like being done wrong. I don't like being done wrong. You don't like being done wrong. But it happens to us. It happens to us. And we've got to learn to let go. You ever heard somebody say, just let it go? <laughs> you know, we kid around, let it go, let it go. <laughs> but deep inside, we know it's the truth. 
that we've got to let it go or it's going to get us in the end. Our text said that we have to press toward the mark. <coughs> Reach the future. Reach toward it. Not the past. And this morning for just a few moments I want to preach upon Lord. I have to get over this thing. I have to get over this. First of all, you will have to battle your flesh. You have to battle this flesh. Your flesh will fight you and fight you and contend against you and tell you that there's no overcoming this thing in your life. How many know that devil's a liar, huh? There's no truth in him at all. Do you remember whenever Moses hit the rock, struck the rock and the water came out, people began to drink and their thirst was quenched? Exodus 17 and 8 lets us know, but then came Amalek and began to fight with Israel. As soon as the refreshing presence of the Lord came by, and Israel began to drink of the Lord. Here came Amalek that always represents and typifies the flesh. And began to fight with the children of Israel. There's a battle going on between flesh and spirit. A battle going on for supremacy in our lives. Lord, I've got to get victory over my Flesh. The Bible tells you and I walk in the spirit and we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I believe it's a attitude of total dependence upon the Lord. Amen. Realizing you can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it with your own ability. We've got to have that mindset, that attitude, that mentality of total dependence upon the Lord. Lord, help me get victory over my flesh today. I'm tired of hurting people with my words. Oh, praise God. How many of you ever hurt somebody with your words? Huh? <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. God, give me victory over my flesh because I don't want to hurt anybody else. With my words, this tongue right here, this tongue of Jim Glasgow has chopped down a few people in its lifetime. Oh, help me, God. I've, I've got to get victory over it. I'm not ever going to get to where I need to be in God until I get complete victory over this thing. And it can only be tamed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? amen. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'll tell you what. This coming week, you and I will face the challenge of controlling this tongue. And again, you can't do it in your own ability. You can't do it with your own strength. You're going to need the help of Almighty God. You're going to need the help of the Holy Ghost. Amen. May He season my speech with salt. Amen. I tell you, I like salt on things. Amen. It makes things taste just a little bit better. Let no corrupt communication Proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, let it minister grace and edification to the hearers. And I'll tell you. He said, Brother Jim, I ain't stood in front of anybody and chopped them down with my tongue this week. <laughs> I ain't saying you had to do it face to face. <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, but when we're in the privacy of our own home, the secret chambers of our lives, how many times have we chopped down people with our tongues? Huh? I'll raise my hand again. Listen to me, church. We're never going to get to where we should be in the Lord until we get victory over this thing right here. This thing right here, this tongue, it cost the children of Israel, made them wander in the wilderness for 40 long years when they could have just marched right on into the promised land if they would have just trusted God and believed God. But their tongue got them in trouble. Their words got them in trouble, amen. 
God, help me. Let everything that come out of my mouth, let it praise you. Let it glorify you. Listen, you're going to be done wrong, huh? I'm going to, we're all going to be done wrong. Oh, but we've got to reach that place like the Lord Jesus Christ and be able to just let it roll off us. Even be able to cry out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Lord, help me gain victory over my flesh. God, I've got to get the victory over this here because just as soon as I think I'm growing in you, I start mowing down somebody with my words. I start chopping down somebody with my tongues, and it sets me back a year or two. God, help me today to get absolute victory over this three-inch tongue that I've got. Boy, that was, thank you for the amen. <laughs> Help me get victory over my flesh. Somebody hurt me a long time ago. And I'm mad. And I just can't let it go. I feel unappreciated. We got to get victory over it. Or it is going to dog us all the days of our life. Paul said, forget those things that are behind. Move on. Advance in the Lord. Mature in the Lord. Go on. We've all been done wrong. I could ask for a show of hands and every hand would go up here this morning of who's been done wrong. And to each of us, our wrong that we've had done to us, to us, it's worse than the other people's wrongs that were done to them because it happened to us. But have you had your beard plucked out? Have you been scourged? Have you been whipped, mocked, cursed at? Nails driven in your hands, nails driven in your feet, a spear driven in your side. Lord, help me to get over this thing. Jesus Christ rose three days later in victory. And there was no vengeful spirit about him at all. How many times have we said, oh, <laughs> your day's coming. Your day's coming. And I won't forget, huh? Huh? The Lord could have said that about me. Jim Glasgow, you put me on a cross. Your sins put me on a cross. Your life put me on a cross. And when I rise again, I'll remember. But he rose again and he said, come. Come. Come experience this eternal life. Come experience my love and my presence, hey man. Oh yeah, there's going to be a battle with this flesh, hey man. Hallelujah. But there is hope today through the Lord Jesus Christ. This flesh can be whipped. It can be defeated. Paul fought his flesh every single day. Daily, he said, I die daily. He was in a constant struggle with his flesh. But he had victory. Number two, we got to get over it and accept the will of God. I said, we got to get over it and accept the will of God. In 1 Samuel 16 and 1, the Lord asked Samuel, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? I've rejected him. He was saying, get over it, Samuel. Wipe the tears from your eyes. Quit talking about it anymore. Quit complaining and whining about it. I have rejected Saul. Quit mourning for him. Samuel learned he needed to get over it before he could get on with life. Amen. And I'll tell you what, we need to get over it before we can truly get on with life. God was saying, get over your gloominess and yield your will to me. Praise the Lord. It was kind of like he was calling him a Jonah. He was saying, get over it, Jonah. Quit your pouting. 
Put a smile on your face and get on with life, amen. Listen to me. We need to get over it and accept the will of God. Don't try to force the will of God. Don't try to open the will of God. Let the will of God uh, uh, come naturally to your life and in God's time. For such a time as this, he said, some people try to force the will of God. Push the will of God, but let the will of God come in its season, in its time for your life. Can you say amen? And then whatever the will of God is in a situation, however God answers the prayers, accept it and move on in the Lord. I mean, there's people who say, well, I know the will of God for my life. And they constantly say that, say that year after year after year. And man, if it was the will of God, God bring it to pass. God bring it to pass. Number three, Lord, I've got to get over some of this fear. I've got to get over all this fear. First John 4 and 18, fear his torment. I tell you, fear will paralyze you really will. You ever been so fearful that you just were mentally paralyzed? Huh? Yeah. Even affected you physically. Fear will paralyze you. You ever woke up and realized it's only a dream? Huh? The other day we had a well we've had it for a while a leak under the house and finally you know it started to smell and stuff from the kitchen all the way in. It was broken in a couple of places, and uh, and it was backing up, too. And uh, uh, I had a dream. I, I thought, you know, I, I need to get under there and fix that. I said, today's the day. So I got under the crawl hole, cleaned out the closet there, got under, you know, went through the floor there. It was on my stomach then. I started crawling. I thought, okay, I got to make a left right here, and I'll just go all the way down and see what the problem is. And there was a space like that to go through. <laughs> it was muddy, dark, cobwebs. <laughs> and I got through a little bit. And I that a bunch of mice had jumped on me and started eating me alive. And I woke up. <laughs> and I don't dream. <laughs> and I got to thinking, I'm going to crawl in there all the way, and I'm going to get stuck or something, and I'm going to die in there. I'm going to die in there. You'll see my bones one day. Or Brenda's going to have to call 911. They're going to put a rope on my foot and drag me out. <laughs> I thought, that's going to be embarrassing. And uh, I said, well, you know what? I just need to go to Floyd's anyway. I, I, I just need to go there. And uh, so I go down to Floyd's there in Bakersfield. And, and I'm thinking on the way back, Lord, you know I don't want to climb under there anymore. <laughs> if there's some way you can work this out, I sure would appreciate it. I don't want to say I'm fearful, Lord, but <laughs> I really don't want to climb under there. Get home. She talks about her cousin. Hey, how about calling Jeremy? I said, that's it, Jeremy. He's the answer to prayer. Jeremy says, well, I really can't make him kind. Hey, but I got a friend. I thought, oh, no, man. And he does it. I'll tell you what. His friend came over, even looked like Jeremy, just an older Jeremy, skinny like Jeremy. And he climbed right. I said, the, the crawl hole's right in here. He just walks right in there, boom, climbs right under there. I said, do you need my, his name was Rocky, not Balboa, but Rocky. I said, you need my help, Rocky? He goes, no. I said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He crawls under there, man, and he comes back out. I said, watch it look like, Rocky. Yeah, it came apart where you said it did, and it's busted over here in the place. And, and uh, so he said, let me get my saw and stuff, my light and stuff. And, and man, he got right back under there. And, and that was music to my ears. I said, yeah, Bobby, you guys are up. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I, you know, he, he come, back and come back out. I said, now, Rocky, when you get all that done, there's going to be a problem. He said, what? 
I go, it was backing up. It was. He said, hmm. He said, well, I don't like the way your line was. It was kind of sagging and stuff and kind of going up. He said, let me fix that for you. And, and so he fixed it. And he said, well, let's see if the water comes. That we couldn't get no water. He started backing up and uh, after got everything done. And he, that guy climbed back underneath that house. And, and he took the parts, just a homemade, uh, you know, just a home snake. And just started taking the, you know, joints apart and going backwards and finally finally he got it to coming out the the water he said i found your problem i said what's the problem he said a golf ball <laughs> four <laughs> amen he found the golf ball one of the kids i said josiah you put down that you put that down there no nathan did nathan you put that down there no michaela did <laughs> praise the lord but anyway they got that thing out oh i i honestly i honestly thought about that for a couple of days, and it was weighing. <laughs> he said, "But Jim, you're too big for that." Oh, weighed on my mind, and uh, I, I, but but the Lord worked it out. But uh, oh, we we've got to get over our fears. Can you say Amen? Huh? How many of you are battling the fear? You don't have to raise your hand, but God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Fear is the greatest threat. To our mental health, amen, it truly is. Well, it's not going to work out. Well, I'm not going to make it. Well, the doctors didn't give me good news, amen. Fear, it will weigh on your mind. Fear, it will torment you. Lord, I need victory over the fear of the future. Or the fear of the future. <clears throat> He's got my future. If I just keep my faith in Him, He'll lead me and guide me. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I know he holds my future. Hallelujah. I need victory over the fear of the future. Because worrying about it, Jesus said, then add one cubit to your stature. Amen. Some are bound by financial fear. Brother Ambrose says many times, God is your source oh if we can get that into our hearts our spirit god is our source matthew 6 33 jesus said seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you david said i've been young now i'm old and i've never seen the righteous forsaken or received out begging bread amen lord i need victory over financial fear lord i need victory over the fear of death. Listen to me. If you're not saved, you need to fear. If you're not saved, you need to fear, huh? Amen. You need to wake up in the middle of the night just like I did before I got saved and realize if I die, I'm going to hell, huh? If you're not saved, you need to have a fear of death. Amen. And, uh, uh, but if you're right with God, if you're where you should be with the Lord, you don't have to fear. Amen. You don't have to fear. It's just a shadow that will pass over you. Amen. I'm here to say that if you're a child of God, it's just like going to sleep and waking up in the presence of Almighty God. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. I don't have to fear death. Now, I've said many, many times, I'm not going to jump on that train on the engine that leads to glory. I'll wait for the caboose. Amen. Kind of like my family and stuff. Amen. Being around them. But, but I've got that assurance. Whether it's the engine engine, whether it's midway, whether it's the caboose, all I know when I take my last breath on this earth, I shall awake in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Jesus said, I go to prepare you a place. He knows all about it. Lord, I need to get over this here. I'm not going to be anybody's doormat again. I need to get over this here, Lord. I ain't going to treat me like this anymore. Now, I'm not saying react with the vengeful spirit. But I'm going to have some self-respect for myself. I'm going to quit letting people abuse me with their words, with their actions. Lord, if I don't get victory over this here, I'll die. 
and people keep using me and abusing me. I, I, I just got to get over this here. I put up with it long enough, amen. Not going to be anybody's doormat again, Lord. Listen to me. Jesus wasn't the definition of a doormat. He took all that pain and suffering for you and I. Huh? Yeah. And I'll tell you what, Paul was not the definition of a doormat. Peter was not the definition of a doormat. They gave their lives for the gospel take. You take a sinner off the street. They wouldn't have the guts Paul or Peter had, huh? You take a sinner off the street, they don't have the guts you have. Huh? All they're worried about, they don't want to feel the pain. They don't want to feel the, the hurt of the flesh. They don't have the guts you have ready to lay down your life for the gospel. They'll do everything they can to protect their flesh. See, God's got an army. You are a soldier of God. You are a soldier of God. You don't have to be a doormat. You don't have to be a doormat. It's like William on his job one time. Uh, they had a new boss come along and William said that he told him, he said, he said he was hollering at him uh, in front of everybody. He said when he stopped, he said, William told him, William told me that he told him, look, don't ever think I'm afraid of you because I'm not. He said, I'm a Christian. He said, you ain't going to walk over me like this. There wasn't nothing wrong with that. Well, nothing wrong with that. Letting people know I ain't going to be their doormat. I ain't going to be their doormat. Huh? Oh, help us, Lord. <laughs> Can you raise your hands and praise him? <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you don't have to be a doormat. Huh? You don't have to be a doormat. You're a child of the Most High God. <laughs> we William was mowing the lawn here a while back. <laughs> we, remember Steve? He, he goes to William's church, but he comes once in a Steve, you know. <laughs> and he talk real quiet. And June's neighbor. And uh, but uh, William, I guess, the lady, I don't know if William did it or not, but the lady said that he went over a rug or something and shredded it with the lawnmower. And I, I think William denies it. But <laughs> I guess she went to Steve and, and started cussing, complaining about William doing that. And he said, William, I wanted to tell her, does she know who she's talking about? You're a child of God. You've been adopted into the family of God. <laughs> That's the way he talked. <laughs> Amen. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you are children of God, huh? Oh, you're a child of God. Jesus warned us. If the world hates you, know that it hated me first, amen. They lied about him. They mocked him. They cursed him. But he never was their doormat. Willingly, he laid down his life. And on the third day, God raised it up. Yes. Trust the Lord with your past failures. The lady caught in adultery, as we talked about earlier. She had to trust the Lord. He was the only one she could trust. She couldn't trust anybody else around. She couldn't trust the church of that day and hour. She had to trust the Lord. And the Lord helped her. Tell God where you hurt today. Tell God where you hurt today and let him minister to you. Let him help you. Look at Hosea, if you will, chapter 6 and verse number one, come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us and hath smitten and he will bind us up. Lord, I have to get over this here because I'm becoming more bitter. Paul said, forget the past. Let it go. Don't get bitter. I don't think it was ever erased from his mind. He always remembered till the day he died that he was there holding the coats when Stephen died. Stephen was stoned. But he had reached a place in God after he had gotten saved to trust the forgiving power of God. 
Some things we just got to let go. We just got to get over so we can grow in God. So we don't live a spiritually dwarf life, amen. We've got to let it go and to make us bitter, to make us lose out with the blessings of God. We've got to be like Paul and learn to trust the forgiving power of God. Lord, I might have blown it. Lord, I might have been a doormat. Lord, it wasn't my fault. But I ain't going to let the past dictate any longer, any more. God, heal me right now, my emotions. Heal me right now, God. Touch me right now, God. Help me to forget what I've done in the past. Help me to forget what happened to me in the past. Give me strength to go on. The forgiving power of God is great. Yeah. While the devil is throwing He's the accuser of the brother. While he is throwing accusations in your face, the forgiving power of God gives you grace to go forward. Amen. Joseph said, the Lord has helped me to forget. The Lord has. You see, our mind is a massive, it's a massive storage vault. So many things get stored up here. To me, it's when I'm alone. My mind starts. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember? Have you ever been like that? Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, praise God. Somebody mentioned a name the other day. I ain't seen the guy in 40 years. Mentioned a name. And immediately, my mind starts processing it. And there it is. Yeah. I know who it is. Back in fourth grade, he hit me. <laughs> and there were a few times in high school I tried to call him out. <laughs> Huh? Oh, come on. You've done that too, huh? Oh, in the back of your mind, all I got to do is just say a certain name, huh? A certain thing. And, and there it is. <laughs> oh, help us, Lord. Can you raise your hands up? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'd be amazed what's in the back of your mind. You'd be amazed what hinders your growth in God. having a good day and suddenly out of nowhere something that happened to you years ago surfaces you ever watch that show rawhide in the, used to watch it for a little bit you know uh, how's that go move them out move them out rawhide <laughs> you know. have you ever noticed the titles of the episodes on rawhide Incident, just for say, incident at the OK Corral. Incident at Lazy River. Incident at the cathedral. Incident at the corral. Incident in New Mexico. Incident in Texas. It's always incident, incident, incident. With our lives. <laughs> If you could read the book of your life, it would be incident at so-and-so, yeah. incident with so-and-so, incident at so-and-so, incident with, it's stored up there. God, give me victory over that because I'm tired of thinking about it, rehashing it all the time. I want to grow in the Lord. Can you say amen? You'll find perfect peace if your mind is stayed upon the Lord and not the incident at so-and-so. Lord, help me to get over what happened. It's driving me crazy. Touch my mind. Heal my mind. What happened to me years ago does not have to dictate my future tomorrow. Think on true things. Honest things, pure things, lovely things. Yeah. Look at 2 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 10, 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of 
Christ. Lord, remodel, reconstruct my mind. Renew my mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Lord, help me. I'm going to be a person of confidence now. A person of confidence from now on. That is striving to go forward in you. Again, Paul said, forget those things that are behind. Go forward. There's a mark. There's a mark. There's a finish line. Go forward. Go forward. Listen, you don't want to come dragging in. You don't want to come dragging in at the end. Man, you want to come in running full blast at the end. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, this one preacher was preaching. I guess he'd done an in-depth study on the life of Paul and stuff. But he said that whenever they came to get Paul and stuff, uh, you know, they weren't dragging Paul. And he was, no, no. And Paul was leading the way. Let's go. This is my coronation day. This is the day. This is the day I'm going home to be with Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Lord, help me get over it. Lord, help me get over it. Lord, help me get over it. I'll tell you what, I could give you dozens and dozens upon dozens of incidents at so-and-so in my life that I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> but there's victory through the Lord. Victory through the Lord. Huh? Victory through the Lord. Victory through the Lord. Would you stand? Would you stand? Would you stand? Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. No, you just can't, you know, you get a text message on your phone, you know. You read it. Okay, I'm done with it. You know, press delete. Then press the little garbage can sign there, you know. And, you know, it's gone. <laughs> Learned that from Hillary. No. <laughs> All right, move right along. <laughs> okay, move right along. <laughs> but uh, it'd be nice if we could do that, huh? Just like that. I mean, Brother Ambrose, wouldn't it be great if the Lord said, hey, just take the remote of your life and just delete? Remember that hurt? Can you imagine that? Oh, can you imagine the joy <laughs> that would be in churches all across the world? Because everybody is just deleting bad instances of their past. Oh, hold on, hold on. Somebody cuts you down. Hold on. <laughs> you know, that's just deleting everything. But it's not that way. You've got to trust the grace of God. You've got to trust the forgiving power of Almighty God to be able to lay it aside. Because you know what they did to you. You know it's there. But the grace of God is sufficient. Yeah. It is strong. And it will see you through. Amen. It will see you through. Amen. I mean, look at Peter. It was the grace of God that said, don't crucify me like this. Crucify me upside down because I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Lord. Oh, the grace of God. The grace of God. The grace of God like Stephen had. Lord, lay not this charge against him. He was able to let it go. Can you imagine that? What would you have been like being stoned? I would have said, you know what? I'm fixing to call on God. You guys don't know what a nuclear bomb is yet, but he's going to send one your way. He's going to nuke all you. <laughs> I want to be like Stephen. Lay not this charge against them. Don't hold against them. Don't hold against them. Now I don't want you to start calling back things in your mind right now. But just say, Lord, whatever it is. Whatever it is, you, you, you know the injustices, the misfortunes, the misunderstandings. You know the hurt and the pain of my past. You know the fear that I have of tomorrow give me strength because I got to get over it Lord because I'm no good to anybody Lord as long as I hold on to it it's a facade that I put on it's a facade that I put on oh yeah I climbed in that craw hole 
space. touch you today. Let the Lord touch you today. You got to get over it, man. You got to get over it. You got to get over it. Let it go. Let it go. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. If you don't, it'll, it'll destroy you. It will hinder you. It will make you bitter. Give it to God. Give it to God. Give it to God. Because we've all been Let's find us a place to pray if we can. You know what it is that you need to talk to God about. Let's find us a place to pray.